Yo, yo, yo. Thanks for tuning in to the 67th episode of Talks Crypto. And in this episode, I'm going to be talking about not buying a Raspberry Pi, about running a node, trying to run a node under 40 or 100 bucks, whatever uh, number gets me more clicks in the title. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, so I just wanted to kind of like go over something because a lot of my older videos, like the set of videos, I always recommend like a Raspberry Pi. And uh, I just wanted to go over that because obviously with all of the chip shortages, Raspberry Pis cost way too much money right now. Like, um, let me just check eBay, um, because you pretty much can't find these absolutely anywhere at sticker price. Yeah, I'm like over here right now. Um, a Raspberry Pi 4, 8 gigabyte is $169. Um, these things used to cost like 75 bucks, guys. One of the reasons I used to recommend Raspberry Pis is because it was the best bang for your buck. You could get a brand new small low power device for like 40, for like 50 bucks. Uh, you know, a Raspberry Pi 4, 4 gigabyte, I think the sticker price was like fifty dollars or fifty five dollars or something like that um and i feel like a lot of people think that you need like a raspberry pi to run a node uh you don't um almost any computer can run a, a bitcoin node uh you can mine with almost any uh computer as long as it has like the the proper usb ports and stuff like that so um yeah, I just wanted to, to put it out there. Um, I was going to do like an in-depth guide, um, but a lot of the steps are actually uh, the same. And then it's also very difficult to tell you exactly what to do because I don't know what uh, device you're going to pick. So kind of what I'm doing it, for this video is just uh, articulating kind of like what I did uh, with some of these laptops uh, that I found. Because, uh, yeah, essentially, it, it, it's just like the point of the pie was that it was cheap, uh, cheap and easy to use. And um, that was the, the main <clears throat> the main point of it. Uh, there's nothing special about a Raspberry Pi. It's just a single board computer that has that was readily available. Um, I don't think that people should be spending like two hundred dollars on a fucking Raspberry Pi. You can get like an old shitty laptop. And it will most likely outperform the Raspberry Pi. Um, so one of the laptops that I showed before, this one, I got this for $40 on eBay. Um, this is probably the cheapest that you can go. Uh, it's a, This one right here is a, ThinkPad, a Lenovo ThinkPad 11e, uh, the, the Chromebook version. Um, and essentially what I did is it's a little bit complicated, more complicated than I thought it was going to be mainly because, uh, a lot of the Chromebooks have like a, uh, what is it called again? They have a right protection screw. So like you can get a fucking Chromebook for like, no lie. Like, uh, like if you buy it just straight up used, you might be able to get one for like 20 bucks. And, um, or like, like this one, I bought it for 40, um, it has like four gigs of Ram, uh, 16 gigabyte SSD. And, uh, there's different kind of like drawbacks to whatever you choose, because, uh, I guess for the, for the early generation Chromebooks, a lot of them do seem to have this, uh, right protection screw. So you need to make sure that like, if you're buying that, that you have the technical capability to essentially do that because uh, I I was thinking it was going to be just like a regular laptop um, and a, a lot of times the Chromebooks too they have like the 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 RAM or the the storage slotted on right onto the board so you can't really upgrade it upgrade the RAM or you can't upgrade the storage without using some sort of a USB uh, hard drive um, which I don't think is too bad. Uh, it's a decent trade-off. It's, it's not going to look as sexy as a single contained device. 
um but those are still pretty cheap too like <clears throat> the other one that i have is uh, a linux um linux uh, a lenovo thinkpad 460 i got this for about a buck 50. i already had some uh extra m2s at home so you know i just popped in a, a one terabyte ssd into this and now i can run everything over here all you got to do is is it like All you got to do is essentially figure out how to get Linux onto it. After you get Linux onto it, I recommend uh, Ubuntu long-term uh, stability. Uh, I think right now the latest version is 22.04. Um, I think for some of the older laptops, maybe Linux Mint is a more lightweight distribution. And yeah, I just wanted to put that out there. Um, installing Umbral it now is very, very easy. It's li literally you just... Uh, after you install the the um, the operating system of like Linux Mint or Ubuntu, you just run a command line thing, and then after the command is done, it tells you at the end uh, where to like uh, access uh, your Umbral UI stuff. And <clears throat> just to let people know, like I, I guess like some people probably don't know this, whenever you run a uh, Umbral off of a Raspberry Pi. You don't connect it to your computer or to a monitor and um, access the GUI like that. You essentially run the Pi and then like you go to your desktop and then you go to like some website that your Pi is hosting. That's like HTTP dash uh, like umbral dot local or something like that. Um, so essentially now with the new umbral update, you run that command line and it'll set it up everything for you and it works just like a umbral running off a of raspberry pi um <clears throat> one of the things that i did want to go over is uh consider getting a instead of going the, for the chromebook option while the chromebook option is definitely going to be the cheapest you might want to look into getting like a a nicer laptop maybe like um, a thinkpad t400 or t500 because most of those already come with windows and they already kind of like come with a bios so you can pretty much just flash a usb with uh, the operating system you want and boot from usb and then just install <clears throat> install everything over it and then it's not it's not that hard um as opposed to a chromebook you do have to do like some fancy command line stuff uh, in order to actually install a new BIOS on there that you can then get the, the device prepared for flashing. But yeah, that's uh, what, what I wanted to go over. Kind of like your different node options because a lot of times it's just cringe. Like, you know, I, I know a lot of people are spending a, a whole ton of bread a whole bunch of money on they're overpaying for raspberry pies just because there's a shortage and you can get a uh, way more uh, performance for a lot less you know don't be afraid to just like get an old shitty thinkpad and use that like you know you can you can probably get like something with a terabyte hard drive for around 100 bucks but yeah anyway this video is getting kind of long and uh, I just want to put some thoughts out there that there are different options to run your node for. So thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. You guys know I hate asking, but this is Jay Talks Crypto, and I'm signing off.